it was probably 10 years ago that I started having like this dry cough. And uh, I don't know what, you know, how it happened. That was the beginning, you know, of, of me losing my voice and having pneumonia. By the time I knew it, it got to the point where I just couldn't breathe. And I was almost breathless, you could say. One of my pastor, my pastor friend, the one that had been so wonderful to me, he died suddenly. And it was Easter Sunday. By the time he got to the doctor, he had pneumonia, double pneumonia, and he never left the hospital and he died. I remember being there at that hospital with him and in the room and thinking, you know what? I need to go to the doctor. I, I need to get me a good insurance because I'm going to need it in case there's something wrong with me. After a couple of months of them giving me antibiotics, because again, I had pneumonia and I had bronchitis, that doctor saying, you know, Dot, I, I just can't help you anymore. I'm giving you medicines, they're not working. You need to go to a specialist. You need to go to a lung specialist, a pulmonologist. And I said, okay, well, I had never even heard of that, but I'm like, okay, whatever. Alamo Lung Institute, sounds pretty professional. So I call them and I tell them, you know, what's going on. They said, yeah, come on and he can see you this week. He'll see you Thursday. This was a Monday. I said, okay, great, fantastic. And he's making me do this six minute walk. He's like, what's wrong? How long have you been sick? I'm like, what are you talking about? How long have you had this disease? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. So that he assumed that I knew what I had, which was something called pulmonary fibrosis. And we're looking at him like, what is wrong with this man? He's in a frantic, like I'm not sick. So sure enough, Dr. Sepulveda comes in, the main doctor, he's like, Miss Del Rose, I hate to tell you this. He says, I've been a doctor for 25 years, but you, ha I, he says, I'm afraid you probably have this horrible disease called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. You have two to five years to live. You're gonna need a lung transplant. And I need you to go straight to the hospital so that I can confirm that this is what it is through lung biopsy. Because he probably saw it in my face like, yeah, I don't think so, you're crazy. I'm not, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm going to the hospital. I'm like, and how long is, am I gonna be in the hospital? And he's like, just three days, we're gonna do a test, you'll be out. What should have been a three-day stay ended up being a 26-day stay. I meet this university transplant. I go there and, and they say, oh, by the way, before you can even get listed or even see if you're a good candidate for transplant, we require you to come up with $26,000. This Mustang that my mom had, had given to me, my uncles and I, we kind of had already you know, decided that we were gonna raffle it off. And I said, well, hey, why don't we raffle it off and we'll do the raffle, whoever wins that day of, of the Chalupa plate sale. And, uh, and my mom's like, no one's gonna buy a, a raffle for $100 for that Mustang. And I said, well, you know, mom, we're gonna find out, right? We're gonna see. So sure enough, within a month's time, we sold over 200 tickets and we were able to raise well beyond the $26,000 that we needed. I remember the first uh, $1,000 check that we got um, and it, it's, there was a note on there and it said, Dot, this is to give you hope. And I knew that we were gonna raise this money. And I said, okay, well, grandma's gonna do the, pick the winning ticket. And I, she was 83 at the time, my grandma. And then the name comes out, Bill Vinyl. And everyone's like, Bill Vino, who the heck is he? And I said, oh yeah, Bill Vino's that man. They gave me the first thousand dollars as a donation, you know, for the raffle. We call him and, and I say, hey Bill, guess what? And everyone's there, we're like, well, who's this, what's gonna happen? And I say, hey Bill, guess what? You won the car. And he says, he says, you're kidding me. And I said, no, Bill, you won it. And he says, wait a minute, Dot, let's talk about this. He says, I already have a car and you're gonna need one when you get better. Oh my God, I began to weep and just cry. But something about that selfless gift of someone being that generous to give me this vehicle that gave me hope. And so sure enough, on June 7th of 2010, I got my new lung. I just celebrated my fifth year anniversary, and in fact, today is my 64th month anniversary. My life has never been the same. Has it been easy? No, you know, but it's, it's very rich. The things that mattered to me before, they just don't matter. Relationships are so important. Conversations are important. My time is super important. No relationship or no friendship, no time spent is wasted. It's the utmost important. And so that's how I live my life. I dedicate my life bringing awareness to organ donation, pulmonary fibrosis. I've started a support group to help those that don't know about it. Funny thing is that without Christ being the center of it, none, none of it works. So I, I do it all now. I have freedom and I enjoy my life.
you know, a lot of the people that, that are praying know someone that is going through something. Tell them, you know what, you're not alone. You know what, I've been there. I know what you're going through. Unfortunately, I've done just about everything there is. So when I tell you that you will come out of it, you will. Because if he did it for me, surely he can do it for you. Because I believe in miracles. And I know someone that can help you. And that I would help them through that and pray, pray with them through counseling and through follow-up. Not just a one-time thing, it would be up to them. But I would just follow up with them and be a friend for life for them. Because I, I believe it takes someone to be there steady for you, for you to have that one person to go to.